Welcome and thanks for joining me for Pathfinder Kingmaker. This is Journeys in the Stolen Lands. Not sure what Bruin's doing here. Checking his pulse. Um, uh, might be a good idea, I guess. Uh, some other people here aren't doing so well. We took care of things here for Jethel, and now we've got some people to level up, and then we're gonna head out and decide what to do next. Okay, Alvar picks up another uh, boost here to his tower shield strain training and armor training at level 15 here. Okay, then we're gonna take weapon specialization here for the heavy pick for him and a point in perception and that's it for Alvar. Okay, and then we're gonna pick up improved critical here on Bruin, our cleric. He uh, gets that and we'll look at his spell book here. I think we're gonna pick up Bear's Endurance Mass here. Um, I think this could be a pretty good regular buff. Lasts a minute per level. So that'd be like 15 minutes for him. Um, plus four enhancement bonus to constitution and the usual benefits to hit points, fortitude saves, constitution checks, and so forth. Um, I think we will uh, pick that up and then he gets another level seven spell here. I like the destruction a spell. I think maybe we'll just pick up another one of those. And he is good to go. Okay, we leveled up Jaithel then real quick too. Not sure how much more we'll be using her, but she's ready to go if we need her. So let's let's see, there's there anything else here we need to pick up. I think we can pick all that stuff up when we leave. We're gonna head out and see where we're at. I think we're we're over close to Pidax, so I think just because of where we're at. I think maybe just some more kind of exploration around the Pidax area might be good. See if we uncover anything else related to the quest. We're kind of just waiting right now. We have sort of a vague objective to survive, basically, um, until we have a chance to counterattack against Irovedi. So maybe we'll, we should go visit this Hemlock Island. Uh, we haven't been to this mysterious shrine yet. Um, I guess we could try getting into Pidax again. I don't think that that's going to be successful. Let's let's see if we can get to this Hemlock Island. Oh, you know what? We need to. Uh, we have to take the time to swap out Jethel here. Sorry, Jethel, but we need to uh, get our regular group back with us. Here we go. Okay, Hemlock Island. Reaching the wooded isle, we stopped to look around. The locals living around the lake fully believed the place was cursed. Day and night, colored lights supposedly appeared around the island, and some brave souls would even watch them fly over the water. The local legends said that anyone who saw those lights would definitely disappear, if not that night, then within the month, for sure. We didn't see any lights at all, though. The island seemed forlorn and completely uninteresting. Silent, gloomy pines loomed over the gray, rocky shore. A narrow path disappeared into the woods. We decided to follow the path and explore the mysterious island. Whoever made the path clearly didn't use it often. We could barely make it out among the ferns. We had to walk single file along the path as branches from the crowded bushes grabbed at our sleeves and backpack straps, only to hit the next person in line once we'd passed. The forest grew taller and thicker and ever darker. The air suddenly grew intensely humid as clouds of milky white, incredibly thick fog flowed up from the ground. And believe me, dear reader, when I say incredibly thick, we're not talking like how an innkeeper might talk up his soup. It became impossible to see past our own noses, and it was like our ears had been stuffed with cotton. The air itself became so dense it was like walking through water. We had to navigate by touch, and we could move only half as fast as we'd been going. Kane, who'd been walking last, was forced to stop. With great difficulty, he could barely make out the muffled and worried voices of his friends ahead. Something had to be done, but what? Okay. Um, so we could try the mobility check here. Kane decided to break through the fog and try to catch up to everyone. 
Nice. Kane continued forward through the fog, but progress became more difficult with each step. He felt a sudden movement of air to the left before he flew forward, having been pushed hard in the back. But our bra brave leader's dexterity didn't fail him. Kane kept his feet and turned sharply, managing to spot a shadow disappearing into the fog. The fog finally began to clear, and soon there was no trace of it. Kane looked back, and his friends were nowhere to be seen. But up ahead, he could just make out a blinking, welcoming light. As Kane approached the light source, it quickly became clear that the light was a bonfire. Soon, Kane entered a brightly lit clearing and saw all of us. But why then did no one jump up to greet him or give a welcoming yell or a hug or even offer a cup of hot tea? Why had everyone frozen in their seats, spoons lifted in the air? Why the deathly silence? Imagine Kane's surprise when he finally saw why his appearance had caused such a strange reaction. It seemed he hadn't been missing at all. He'd been sitting with us all by the fire, watching his exact copy emerge from the forest. Yes, dear reader, just imagine it. Two copies of the king met in the clearing, seemingly identical. But which of the two was real? The king sitting by the fire said, How can there be any doubt? I am the real king, of course. Devils know who just walked out of the forest, and you're ready to believe them over me? So much for good friends. And what did the king who walked out of the forest answer? Is this related to that uh, problem card we've kept getting about the doppelganger on the throne? Interesting. Um, we already passed this lower nature check. We can intimidate. <clears throat> I can tell you exactly how many meals we carried with us down to the last pack of hardtack. Can he do the same? A deafening silence hung in the air. One could hear the thoughts churning through our brains, and then the cane sitting by the fire laughed in a strange voice. He stood up and began rising into the air. The mask dropped and we saw a short, pale man with blonde hair and parrot-like wings with bright feathers. We all went after him together, but Cain held onto him most tightly. His hands gripped the Joker's wing in an iron grip. Then an ear-piercing whistle sounded from all around us, and stones began raining on us from above. The imposter was aided by his winged kin, who grabbed him by the hands and began pulling him up. We didn't give up, but in the end, we were overpowered. There were just too many, dear reader. They quickly reclaimed our prisoner from us, soaring into the air and shaking their fists at us. They flew off. We sat a long time around the fire, laughing and chatting about how Cain cleverly dispelled the illusion. And when morning came, as we looked around at the rainbow-colored feathers left behind by our uninvited guests, I noticed one of them had lost a valuable bracelet in the fight. We'd ended up with a trophy, at least. Okay, at first, when I first read this, I thought that they flew off with Kane, but they flew off with the uh, imposter Kane. Okay. All right. Let's see what this uh, brace, these bracers were. Golden Vision. Bracers grant its wearer a plus one bonus to Illusion School Spells DC and a plus two bonus to Saving Throws against Illusion School Spells. Well, we could put those on Alora for sure. She's going to lose a ton of AC, but she's not typically the one getting hit. Um, wow, wow. Really brings down her AC. But maybe we can live with that. Still higher than Amaya's, actually. That plus one bonus to Illusion School is, like, uh, perfect for her. So I think we want to do that. Alright, that's cool. That was Hemlock Island. So, let's, let's head toward this mysterious shrine. I'm determined to try to solve this puzzle. Okay, let's check out this shrine. Here we go. So we got the monolith over on this side. And down here is the missing piece with the inscription on it. Sleep well, my queen. Rest in your endless sleep. And let us, the betrayers, have dreams in your stead. 
I don't know. I think my uh, I think my hunch about these is that we're putting together a story based on these missing pieces, and we need to put the monoliths in the order of the story. But I don't. So I don't know if the first one is down here or first is up here. This feels like it could be the end. Maybe we'll leave that. We'll say the top is the end of the story and leave that there. Although it's kind of weird that it would just already be in the right place. So we could say the bottom is the end. Let's move it there. Anything else here to pick up? I don't think so. Okay, well, we need to find all the shrines. Focus on the goal. I probably, I should be like taking a screenshot or making a note of all those inscriptions to try to remember the order. If that's even what we're supposed to be doing. So this ornate ruins popped up over here. So I think maybe we could head that way or we could head down here through the middle. Let's go this way, see if there's anything here in the middle we're missing. Okay, ornate ruins. We did have something pop up there in the kingdom management. I think maybe we just uh, went over into the next month. So there's probably some things that we failed that we didn't get started. Okay, I realized we've never rested uh, since like everybody leveled up. We don't even have new spells and we're kind of low on stuff. But this is probably just one golem here. We'll hope that we can manage that. Okay, let's, let's hit him with the bow here to get started. That cold moon bow is cool. I guess we just caught him flat footed here too. Nice. All right, we got everybody up here close. Uh, I don't think even, uh, can would they be vine trapped? I feel like maybe they can. No, they're immune. Okay. I. I've probably forgotten that like 10 times by now. Die, die, die. I think we can take him though. Cut him down to half health. Kane could actually just finish it right here. Oh. Ouch. Jeez. <laughs> just wiped out Anna there. Okay. Wait. <laughs> okay, I just realized that Amaya here got turned into a dog. Okay, that's different. Out of my way. Okay, we just need one more shot on him here. There we go. And. Alora leveled up. Cool. Okay. Can he fix her uh, death store here real quick with Breath of Life? Ah, shoot. I feel like that has fixed death store in the past, but maybe they have to actually be like unconscious. I don't know. Okay, we leveled up our Thessalonian specialist wizard, Alora here, picked up elemental focus for electricity and then um, spell specialization for the spell storm bolts and the spell storm bolts, as well as shadow evocation greater. I do things. So that in her spell book, we'll add shadow evocation greater here to the favorite school slots and then two casts of storm bolts here okay 
Anything here we need to pick up? We've got an orc double axe. That appears to be it. All right, it's back out on the road. Okay, yeah, we passed into a new month, so I'm sure we've got some uh, things here that failed. I'm not gonna worry about that yet. We do need to make camp. We might as well just go ahead and, well, let's travel a bit and then we'll camp as soon as someone is tired. We could head up here. Kinda wanna stay close here to Pidax. Finish uh, finding anything else around here. Okay, we're across the river here. We found a giggling hill. Let's, so are we actually in, I think we're out of Pidax now, maybe, and actually in Thousand Voices. Let's see what we've got here. We did camp, so everybody is rested up and ready to go. Wow, okay, I just discovered, so Amaya is actually cursed here with this Baleful Polymorph, and this does not wear off. She's a dog now. <laughs> we need a remove curse spell. I think we probably have a scroll for that. Hopefully we have someone who can cast it. I'm guessing Bruin could do that. Well, it seems we don't have Remove Curse. We've got Remove Blindness and Remove Paralysis. So, unfortunately, I guess Amaya is stuck as a dog for the time being. Uh, that could be a problem here heading into whatever this is. Oh, is this another one of the uh, puzzles? It doesn't, it wasn't called Mysterious Shrine. Interesting. The night is dark, my queen, dark as your heart. Dark as the despair that consumed our lives when we killed you. Hmm, we could say that's the second to last one. The, the last one we found we put here, let's move it here. Okay. It's interesting. So they kind of uh, faked us out there with uh, not naming this mysterious shrine. I'm glad we stumbled upon this. Okay, I'm going to look at Bruin's spell book and see if he's got a remove curse that we could have him Memorize next time. Here we go. Remove curse. Okay, that's ready to go. We'll camp next time and he'll learn that. We can get Amaya back with us. So we could try entering Pidax again. Nope. Head down south. We're getting pretty far out here away from everything. Let's see where this route ends up. Let's keep heading north. Kind of wind our way back around here. Yeah, let's come back this way. I think maybe we ought to get back into our territory so we can check on kingdom stuff. So let's travel back over here to Dyerberg. We actually could just teleport home. That would take care of this. I mean, we can easily come back out here if we need to. So let's let's head back to the capital. That way we can check on everything that's happening in the throne room. Okay, we rested up. I am gonna, we memorized that remove curse spell, but I'm gonna go ahead and buy at least one scroll for that. Might as well grab a few of them. So that we can go ahead and take care of that on her. Hmm. It wouldn't let me cast it like that, so I don't know. Alright, let's, let's check in here. 
Okay, failure with the back doors. Failure with the Wrath of the Forest. We didn't start either of those or this one. Stripped of feeling. Uh, success with, oh wow. Moderating the Pitaxian influence. The kingdom will soon fall though. The regent's people successfully persuaded the locals to remain. Several who left the kingdom for Pitax have already returned and like 20 to everything. Nice. Okay, so we've got the debate and balance. An envoy of balance and priestess of a wandering commune of ascetics has deemed the kingdom to be upsetting the equilibrium in these lands. On these grounds, the elf and her pupils urge the subjects to disobey the guards and resist and undermine the power of the local authorities. Bartholomew, take care of that, will you? So we can rank up Valerie here. Um, let me see if there's anything else we should start up. Everybody's fairly busy at the moment. Yeah, let's go ahead and get a rank up done. Reached rank eight. Okay, community. Um, some of these these values here have gotten arcanes at zero, cultures at zero. How did? Wow. Okay. When did that happen? Is that just from, have we been failing so many things? Sure. That's interesting. Success with the court intrigue. I guess I was not paying attention to that. I, I don't feel like we've failed that many things to have gone to zero on those. But I guess we have. Okay, success with the mercenary army. Sold a soul jar. Is it just this again? Same quest again. Okay, wow. Do we want to go two more? We definitely want to uh, succeed in this. That was a big boost to everything. Yes, we do. The morning after. We don't have anyone for that. Well, that's just really a shock that some of these are that low. I guess I just haven't been paying attention. This feels like a big uh, drop in those. I don't feel like there's anything more active we can be doing besides uh, waiting here. We do have quite a bit of BP built up, so I'm going to take a quick look around and see if we should be building anything. Okay, we did have a few things to upgrade in Varnhold, so we did that. I noticed we're at worried here. Um, I think we're just gonna go ahead and do another rank up. I'm kind of uh, not sure what else to do right now. I mean, besides exploring, which I know we have some to do, but these rank ups need to be done, so we might as well get them done here while we have time. This will get economy up to six. Nice. Disaster with the balance. Success with the cobblestone druids. Still not sure how our culture got to zero. I guess I just was really not watching that. Triumph with the full-blooded. The warden increased the number of palace guards on night patrol. They captured two nobles who turned out to be vampires.
It says we've got guests. Oh. Not in the throne room. Okay, we have guests from Thornkeep. Gangs of Thornkeep have made a habit of passing through this region on the way to raid their neighbors, then on their return, hiding just beyond the kingdom's border. They pitch camp not a hundred paces from our lands, though officially they are within Thornkeep's domain. However, the kingdom's neighbors think they are being attacked by raiders from the stolen lands. Keston's on that. I think we need to save our crisis points for the pit axe stuff. It's one and four. Um, and then the contract, a notorious assassin from Daggermark has taken a contract on the king's head. An open challenge to a duel is not a likely result. An arrow in the back or a goblet full of poison, however. Oh, boy. <laughs> Jaythal, you're going to have to do it with 35%. Um, a new priest of Abadar. Highest ranking priest of Abadar in the kingdom has passed away. Now the clergy must elect a new leader. If any of the candidates should win, thanks to the king's support, their gratitude would be immeasurable. Kanera is on that. I feel like these are like really repeating more now. Uh, and then the morning after. Sky was shining all through the night. It was the eve of a merry fay festival. Drunk and raving, the fay retreated to their world come morning, but they left chaos behind. One of the rivers has changed its course, a forest has disappeared, and a hill has turned into a gaping hole in the ground. The changes have terrified the peasants. To make matters worse, our mages agree that nature will soon revolt against the blatant interference and unleash its wrath upon the villagers. Oh boy, I guess we'll use a point there. I can't believe we're so low in crisis points. <laughs> Alright, and then, so while, that, while that's happening... We're going to start up. We're, we're going to do the rank up here for military. Rank seven, military. Okay, he wants to talk to us now. Okay, let's go talk to Ragongar. Ragongar grins contentedly. I have an idea I'd like to share with you. I'm sure it's occurred to you that we are now in control. We're the power everyone answers to, and not only in the Stolen Lands. We demand respect, and those worthy of respect are worthy of doing business with. Profitable business. Anyway, three representatives of dealers in life and death have requested an audience with you. All three are willing to support our army. Talk to them and decide which of them we want to sign a contract with. However, we can't hire all three. Each of them wants to be your main weapons supplier. If I were you, I'd consider the Arcanamarium. I should talk to their ambassadors. The Halfling in Black. It's like a bellhop. The Halfling standing before you wears fine black cashmere. He has a couple of strange looking palm sized crossbows in his waistband. His expensive attire does nothing to disguise the scars on his face and hands or his sturdy posture. Your guest seems more accustomed to sitting in the saddle and wearing traveling clothes rather than visiting palaces wearing ex expensive attire. Greetings, your highness. I am Captain Romello. I represent the Smoky Dawn Arms Factory in the Grand Duchy of Alkenstar. Our enterprise is prepared to provide your army with the finest weapons ever made. What exactly do you have to offer? The captain's voice grows serious. We will provide our, your soldiers with our weapon, teach them how to use it, and make sure the weapons are working. Believe me, each bolt shot by our crossbows will cost the enemy an equal amount in gold. I should make clear from the beginning, we are not selling the technology. Your engineers won't be permitted to repair the weapons. They are to be handled exclusively by our specialists. However, if you are interested in any of our non-weapons technologies, our craftsmen will gladly train yours. What makes you think I'd prefer your odd toys over time-honored magic? Because you're smart, your highness. Firstly, our toys are way safer, and their failure is far less dangerous than magic cast awry. Secondly, anyone with an eye and two hands can use our weapons. That makes things a bit simpler for you, doesn't it? Tell me about the weapon in your waistband. The captain grins and pats his crossbows. So, you'd like to know how they're operated? What gears bring these small death machines to life? How can they rain bolts down upon the enemy without ever recharging? It's a secret. We make our living from other people's ignorance of how our weapons work. Nevertheless, 
I will tell you a secret about these two crossbows of mine. The left one is for normal work. I use it to kill bandits and thieves spying on our secrets. It's loaded with ordinary bolts. The right one is for special occasions. Each of its bolts bears the name of a rascal who wronged me or my family. When the right one is empty, my travels on Galarian will end, and I will return to Alkenstar and find myself something else to do. Tell me about your motherland. Where is it? We don't hear about it often here in our domain. Alkenstar is halfway around the world. You see, magic, how can I put this? It doesn't work in our lands. Don't ask me why. That's a question for the researchers and historians. But we ordinary people of Alkenstar managed to turn this nuisance to the greater good. Romolo rubs his chin. We gave up magic for the sake of science. No country can compare to Alkenstar in terms of its technological miracles. We didn't just survive. We are doing very well here, where a mage could never endure. And we are willing to share our findings with anyone willing to pay a fair price. Okay. Uh, how about the sorceress? A sturdy, middle-aged woman in practical gray attire bows to you. You can tell by the numerous strings and laces on her neck that she's wearing quite a number of amulets under her robe. Her hair is short and cropped. First Foreman Raculata, at your service, your highness, reporting for negotiations on behalf of the Wands Brigade, graduates of the Arcanamarium. So this is, this is Ragongar's recommendation. What do you have to offer to my troops? Our experience. You're hiring the Wands Brigade, an independent squad of mages, not merely as soldiers, but as advisors and trainers for your other troops. Each of us not only possesses magic, but also has extensive combat experience. What's more important, we know when and how to use it. We're not theor theoreticians theoretic <laughs> or professors, your highness. We're arcane practitioners combat specialists and frontline workers. We're willing to share our knowledge with your military mages. Your title is very unusual. Every member of our brigade is an Arcanamirium graduate. We each have combat experience and a desire to build a mercenary career. We've been preparing to ex accept your orders since we entered the Wands Brigade. What is this Arcanamirium so famous for? It is the oldest, biggest, and the most prestigious arcane academy in Absalom. It's very influential. Students come from all over the world to master the art of magic. Mind you, the school is tuition-free. They teach both magic and practical skills, both of which are certainly useful to combat mages. For instance, if you've learned to summon enraged monsters, it might also be a good idea to learn to run fast. Smile brushes lightly over Rakalata's face. Okay, that sounds pretty good. I like that they're uh, willing to share things with us as opposed to the crossbow bellhop guy. Okay, the dwarf. Wag Wadga, priest of Kyrgyz. An unusually tall and sturdy dwarf with a shaved head bows to you. Despite the weather, his feet are bare and he's wearing a simple vest over his naked torso. His mighty but pleasant voice fills the entire hall. Greetings, your highness. I am Wadka, priest of the glorious god Kyrgyz. I believe it was not by coincidence that the road brought me and my comrades to your lands. How can you help me, help my army? Your soldiers are brave but weak. By the will of Kyrgyz, we'll sort out your pathetic forces. My priests know how to strengthen a soldier with magic that will give them the power and speed of a mighty animal. And if that fails to protect them, our prayers will heal your warriors and restore them to perfect fighting form. Tell me about your god. Kyrgyz was a Taldin villager of remarkable figure. He traveled around towns, visited trade fairs, took part in every competition and show, and always won. It's only natural that everybody was jealous. His rivals set a trap for him during a competition. He died, giving his life to protect the other participants, but his glory lived on even after his death. Few mortals, mortals are deemed worthy of joining the godly host, and Kyrgyz was among them. What is your church? Our church is young and we don't have an established hierarchy yet. We wander from town to town, healing the diseased, mentoring the weak and the sick, teaching them how to harness their own powers, inspiring those who are able to reach beyond their own boundaries. We do not build temples, for we believe our bodies are the temples. A tent in a field, that's all we need. 
It disgusts Kurgis when people cripple themselves, so we reject alcohol and stupefying potions. I shall prohibit these among your soldiers. The spirit grows stronger in a mighty body. Kurgis dislikes foul play, so cheating is also illegal. You look outlandish, wherever you come from. Well, thank you. I wish you could meet my grandfather. He was a real hero, stately and notable. Myself, I'm a mere peasant from a small village on unclaimed land. I was once a fighter. However peaceful I may be, I am still very passionate. When it comes to wrestling, I can best even you, though now I'm a priest as well. Okay, I need to think this over. Try throwing a kettlebell up and down. Physical effort stimulates the brain. It doesn't matter. Okay. I was afraid that we weren't going to actually get to choose there. That was weird. You should think fast. What if an enemy assault takes us by surprise and we've got no reinforcements, huh? I like the mage guy. I think... So military plus three, minus three BP a week. The same effect no matter what, I guess this like entirely a role-playing choice i'm impressed with the arcan Miriam's power i'd like its graduates to train our mages you can get a decent education in arcan Miriam. they don't just teach the books but also how to use your legs and hold a weapon the result is a well-rounded warrior bakken's here with a potion of shield of dawn and potion of greater invisibility and one more thing, you remember that potion you helped me test? I do. It was interesting. Bakken gives you a conspiratorial wink. Well, it's almost ready. I got rid of all the rot that was spoiling the formula, and now it works just fine. I just need to brew a large enough dose, and that, and that takes time. Unless you have another assignment for me, you'll have the elixir the next time we meet. Well, I'm becoming a little bit concerned. I guess I feel like just spending more time getting things ranked up is our best course of action at the moment because I, I don't see anything actively that we should be doing we've got um, let me look at how long's left on that project to uh, Find the location. We're at 12 days left. Away into Nervous's dream. Maybe that. Maybe finishing that will move things forward. So we can rank up military again. I just... It sucks. I don't know how culture <laughs> went so... Culture and arcane, divine too. I guess I just, I guess I've just failed too many things that have brought those down. I just hope that's not gonna uh, really hurt us. We can get storyteller on this, maybe get a little culture. Although I'm not gonna spend a crisis point on this celebrity. Everybody else here is busy. No one's going to finish before the end of the month, so we're going to fail all these things. Three problems we're going to fail. I guess I'm going to just go ahead and do this rank up. We're going to we're going to go into the next month and we're going to fail a bunch of stuff here. Military's up to 8. Disaster with that. We did get success with the morning after. The problem with these being so low is we never get then the chance to rank them up. I think we now we we have to get these up to like I don't even know what the number is for like 80 now to be able to go, get to the next rank. Barnhold's besieged. Barnhold has descended into mayhem. A bandit leader has risen to power in the woods and keeps gathering gangs under his iron command. Chasing him is like chasing the wind. But he keeps busy striking the remote settlements in the region. The guard and militia are holding fast, but they need reinforcements. Okay. Well, we can put him on that. 
61% is not bad either. Um, Raganga wants to speak to us. They're suggesting Octavia for this, but it's 0% even with that. That's the other one um, that really needs a rank up. Changelings. 5%. Um, what's Keston doing? He's going to be done. Well, we'll have a chance, I guess, before the end of the month. All right. Five days left on this one. Let's go talk to Ragongar again. Ragongar looks a little banged up, and he smells like smoke. Kane, you know me. I would never cause alarm for no good reason, but right now I'm telling you, there's unrest brewing in your army's ranks. And it's not even proper conspirators. No, it's just the regular idiots. Two of our commanders are bursting with ambition. Both of them have outgrown their current positions. They're always challenging each other and settling their scores by stirring up our soldiers. Officer Chevold insists that our infantry, the vanquisher of Numeria, rules the open field. Commander Zepha argues that only mages truly understand the art of battle. And the infantry are farmhands and mud beaters. You can imagine where this has led to constant fighting among the ranks. At first, I just watched and laughed, but now it's not funny anymore. The lads are so wound up, they're going to start killing each other. The fighting has to be stopped. Divide the army in two. I'll take command of half. A new general, Zepha, will command the other. She's the leader of the mages. She's still green for now, but she's got potential. I'll put infantry officer Shoveled under her command. He's a swords master from Brevoy. That's what makes him think he can bully her. Promoting her to be his immediate commander will force him to calm down. He wants us to do this one, right? We get some arcane, which will be good. Okay. I want a mage to serve as general. Good choice. A warrior needs a body that's tough enough to face the enemy on the front lines and a head that's small enough to do it without fear. Mages are smarter and craftier. Zepha is your best option. Okay, we got... Looks like Turval from Varnhold. Turval greets you with a half bow. Your Highness, please accept this new gift. The elf hands a wrapped parcel to you. I personally vouch for its quality. I made it with my own hands, every stitch and cut. I hope you like it. Mirrored belt. Nice. Let's see what that was. Grants its wearer plus four resistance bonus to reflex saving throws and the ability to cast mirror image spell twice per day as a fourth level wizard. Hmm. He's got the plus four to dexterity and constitution here. He's probably not getting... He's only getting plus three the dexterity bonus. doesn't really need... That dex, but the constitution is pretty nice. But the mirror image and the bonus to the reflex saving throws might outweigh what he's getting from that. He's only getting two AC from that belt. Um, 30 HP though. What about like Kane or someone? What's oh he's got the. Shackled Fury. Plus six to strength. And the intimidation bonus. Yeah, I don't think we can take that off him. Um Anna. She's got the same belt as No, she's got strength and constitution. Yeah. Hmm. Man, I like I like that the mirror image. Maybe it's worth putting that on on Alvar and losing losing some HP. Let's let's try it. We'll see if it if we notice a difference. Okay, that's cool. Okay, we're going back in here. I wanted to take a look at what we're getting. I don't understand how we're at zero when we should be getting 13 culture a week. I think just from Tuskdale. I'm not sure these stats. I don't think I've ever quite understood this number 
here. It's like espionage eight of seventy six. The current that's the current value here on the right. And that's how many we're getting each week, I think, on the left. I don't know if that's in total or just from this location. Eight espionage. Does that sound right? So we should be getting like one, one espionage for, what was that, the inn? One for the aviar aviary, aviary. Three for the villas, so that's five. One for the lighthouse, yeah. So this number, we must be getting eight for the city. Per week, I'm assuming. Or that's just eight. I don't know. If anybody wants to explain this to me, I might have to do some Googling, but like, shouldn't we be getting 13 a week culture just from the city? Is that what that means? Or is that a month? Each month. Maybe that's... Okay, I have this Arcane Mastery project, which uh, gives the general bonus for resolving any situation based on the rank for Arcane, which right now it's only rank 4, so there wouldn't be... There'd be no bonus. But if we can get that up, we would get a bonus. Uh, we'll spend 230 BP for Octavia to do that. Um, and then while that's happening, just rank up military again. Okay, we finished the Storyteller's Ritual. Military is to rank 9. Okay, the Varnal Militia has withstood the test of battle and proven its loyalty. Disaster there. Triumph again with this. Nice, that gets some of those things up. Happy birthday, Triumph, good. Success with the Varnhold Besieged. Triumph with the Contract, good deal. Right, lots of positives here. Success with the guests from Thornkeep. Okay, feels good. We finished the we discovered a way to enter Nyrissa's dream. Lindsay and the storyteller are ready to perform the ritual. Nice. Okay. Regonger wants to talk again. We just we I guess that Yeah, that's our best stat, like by far. Besides stability. Um everything else seems really low now. It just man, and we got this again. I mean, hmm. Guess we put put her on that again. We just we don't have anybody good for this debate. Changelings. Oh wow. Okay, Keston. You can do that. Contagious madness. Zero. We need to. We need a way to get Jod ranked up. Okay, so we'll go talk to Regonger and then maybe maybe see uh we'll be ready then to enter Nyrissa's dream. Regonger grins, pride glowing in his eyes. You know I've been thinking about which of our neighbors would be capable of destroying us if they wanted to, and it turns out that none of them can. As far as military power is concerned, we'll surely defeat anyone stupid enough to cross us. I didn't understand you right away. You have ambition, and you can rule. It wasn't a bad decision to come work for you. By the way, I'm not the only one who appreciates the decisions you've made. There are so many mages in our army that one of the orders of Nethus decided to move their coven to your kingdom. That's worked damn well for us. Do you have any idea what kinds of deadly spells they could teach us? They probably have a spell that summons a swarm of carnivorous bees that fly into their victim's mouth and eats him from the inside out. And a spell that makes spell that makes your heart explode a smell that makes your heart explode would be uh, interesting that's great news thank you well that's all for now there's someone else who wants to talk to you Kane you can do that without me right 
Get a free building, not this academy. Okay, then this is our Arcanimarium mage, Recolata. Your Highness, last night's military exercises were successful. Instructors from the Wands Brigade, acting as opposing force, was successfully repelled by your mages. The training of your first class is completed. The brigade is now accepting students for the second class. Since everything has worked out so well, I have an offer for you. The Wands Brigade would like to settle down. Most of us desire a home and a family more than war and endless military campaigning. And we have grown to like your kingdom. If you allow us to settle down here, it would surely be for your own good as well. We've seen so many different magical weapons over the years. Dwarven axes, elven bows, wonders from Katapesh beyond description. We've studied them all and our masters can easily reproduce these masterpieces. With your support, we could set up a guild where we'll enchant the best weapons in Avistan. New event, Arcanimerium Sanctuary. All right, so Path of Dreams. It's time we paid a visit to the storyteller and go on a trip where we've never ventured before. Good. Okay, we have something else to do that can hopefully uh, help us move this along. We'll, we'll come down here and uh, see what that is next time. Thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Hope to see you again in the Stolen Lands. Bye-bye.